Now let's look at what's called the root test. Um, very similar to the ratio test. If you notice the three criteria are the same really, or I mean the three conclusions are the same. What's really different is how we define that row. So instead of taking the limit of the ratio of successive terms and absolute value, we take the limit of the nth root of the absolute value of the terms. Um, again, the series can be anything, so they don't have to be positive terms. Really, the, the absolute value is taking care of that for us. So. Um, so what I'd like to do is prove the first part. The second part's just the reverse, so I won't bother with that. And then I'll show us again how um, row equal one is still inconclusive. So let's say row is less than one. Then again, it's the same idea. I can find a number because of the real numbers. There's always some number in between. So I can find an R that is less than one, but still bigger than row. Okay, so what does that mean? Again, we're similar to our proof from ratio test. These, these guys here will eventually, so for n bigger than some big N, the nth root of our absolute value of a sub n's is going to have to be less than r. Right? If these are getting closer and closer and closer to rho, and rho is less than r, they're eventually all less than r. But what happens if we just raise both sides to the nth power? Then all you have is that the terms are all less than r to the n. And you could argue that they're, because they're absolute value, they're greater than or equal to zero. What have we just done? We have just argued that eventually all the terms in absolute value are less than these things. Well, these are the terms of a geometric, and specifically a convergent geometric. So, um, So now again, this is much like the ratio test. This isn't true at first necessarily, right? But eventually. So throwing in those first n terms is not going to change things. So, um, so the, the series of the absolute value of our terms converges by dct. So our series converges by act. If the series of absolute value of the terms converges, then the original series does. Part two is, again, just flip this argument around, and you have that you're bigger than a divergent. Um, so then the absolute value of that series diverges by dct, and then you argue nth term test, basically. Um, so, uh, And then what happens in the... In the equals one case, well, let's just look at what happens to any P series. If you t go to calculate rho, and through the absolute value of one over n to the p. You can interchange the root and the power there. So you're looking at the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of n, absolute value to the p. But that is 1 to the p, right, by theorem 5. So again, much like ratio, any p-series comes out to be 1. And we know some p-series converge and some diverge. That's precisely why this test is inconclusive. Also, 
uh, a thing to keep in mind about ratio and root, they will evaluate the same. So if your row comes out to be one under root test, it's going to come out to be one under ratio test. So don't use one of these as a backup to the other because you're going to get the same result. So um, if you're doing ratio test and you get row equal one, don't start all over with root test. You are going to get row equal one again. So like I said before, a row equal one probably means that you either had a p-series and just didn't notice it, or you have something close to a p-series and you should have done DCT or LCT.